welcome to Mine is a Comment. And this is a podcast where I've dedicated this uh, for women, where we can come and beat stories about our lives, about politics, and about how all those things um, affect us. So with me today is Mercy, a very good friend of mine. I just met her very recently, but she's a really cool babe, a girl that lives her best life. <laughs> she runs, she's an auntie, she's a mom, and she does all sorts of amazing things. So I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Thank you for having me, Wanjiro. Yeah. So my, name's, my name is Mercy Njoki Wamboy. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in a hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm a nurse, but I don't practice. Mm -hmm. um, we run the ART department, which is the HIV mm -hmm. department, okay. where we do HIV identification, mm -hmm. treatment, mm -hmm. connection, mm -hmm. and psychosocial support. Nice. Yes. I love it. I love it. And it's very interesting that we're talking about HIV and AIDS in the middle of a COVID pandemic, because when the pandemic began, we focused a lot on the COVID, and then mm -hmm. we forgot that people had other things that they were dealing with. So thank you so much for coming. And um, Masi is here because... Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, when the pandemic was being introduced to us, they talked about frontline, you know, the frontline workers, yes, and yes. you're here because you were actually on the front line. Yes, yes. And so I want us to talk about uh, what was your role uh, as the, as the frontline, especially during this specific pandemic, with regard to either the COVID or the HIV and AIDS, because I think both of those conversations are very, are very important. Important. Yeah. So when COVID hit... Um, it was shocking for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, so it affected mostly my, my clinic, the kind of work I do. Because mm -hmm. um, there was COVID and then there was curfew. Yes. And then there was lockdown. Yes. So everything was haywire everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then we had patients who come for their medication every month. Yes. We have some that come after every two months. Mm -hmm. So there was confusion in those areas. Mm -hmm. And then... I don't know if you should say this soon. Mm -hmm. There was also the government not paying the health workers yeah. who were outside trying to get PPEs. Mm -hmm. So there was all manners of chaos going on. Yes. Uh, so the HIV patients and the people that we manage, mm -hmm. most of them suffered. Okay. With the curfew and lockdowns, because mm -hmm. most of these people are vulnerable yes. people. Yeah. So most people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. They have to eat healthy and they have mm -hmm. to take ARVs. Yeah. Most can't even afford to like travel to come and get. The, the ARVs, ARVs yes. yes. All right. And you mentioned vulnerable people, and I'm very interested in vulnerable, like people who are already vulnerable before the pandemic began and mm -hmm. people who became vulnerable after the pandemic began. So in your opinion, uh, with the work that you do, this group of vulnerable people, who are they? These are the less fortunate people in the community. Yeah. Sorry to say. Yeah. So these are people who... Like you have single mothers, mm -hmm. you have orphans, you have yes. grandmothers raising children who have been left by parents who died of HIV, mm -hmm. orphans who don't have any place any place to go. Mm -hmm. So th those are the people that we're talking about. Okay. Yes. And that's and the vulnerability looks like access to healthcare. It became even worse with COVID. Yes. Yes. All right. Because mm -hmm. these people are the people that we have our social workers and our community health workers mm -hmm. reaching out, mm -hmm. taking medication, mm -hmm. and having program working with people outside the hospital, mm -hmm. who have programs, feeding programs, yeah. clothing programs. Because yeah. the HIV world, mm -hmm. it takes a whole community. That's it's true. not only at the facility level. Mm -hmm. It has to get outside. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then another reason why I wanted you here mm -hmm. is also because when we're talking about vulnerable people, there are people living with HIV and AIDS, and I'm also very biased towards women especially women who are seeking like emergency services during the curfew time. Remember the first time we had the curfew, the 7 p.m. curfew. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, actually, uh, the one who linked me to you, told me that you were really helping women access emergency services during the pandemic. So you had to step out of what you were doing and help. So could you kindly just tell us a bit about that and why, like what was going on? What, what, what was happening? <laughs> so basically, like you said... Uh, during COVID, there, there were so many women. Like yeah. we have the ANT, mm -hmm. that is antenatal healthcare. Yes. Women going to the clinic mm -hmm. and there was a strike at some point. Yes. So, yes. and most most of the women that I work with outside my job description mm -hmm. are, are these women who are vulnerable. Yes. So most of them could not access the antenatal healthcare. Mm -hmm. So we would, would go to the we'd go to the village mm -hmm. and find these this women, mm -hmm. give them the medication they need. Mm -hmm. 
give them food, mm-hmm. feed these women, clothe them. Some women even give birth in the at home. Yeah. And then we'd have like midwives go. Yeah. And these are people who are in the community who are not getting paid. Mm-hmm. And this is during COVID, COVID time. Yeah. We actually have a story where there's a woman who was sick. Mm-hmm. And then someone connected me to them. Mm-hmm. It was at 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. Tried finding someone to go get the woman. Mm-hmm. Seven o'clock hit. By the time we got a taxi. So the taxi guy got there and said he cannot drive or take anyone anywhere because he didn't have a... A pass. A permit, exactly. So this woman later went to the hospital, yeah, mm-hmm. but she died. But when if you if oh, you do no. a research on this, if she only got to the hospital earlier, she would not have died. Yeah, she would not have died. have died. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Now and she, and she had a four 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 day old baby, a four day old baby. So she had given birth. Because at she home. had given birth at home. Yes. And then now the cab could not take. Yes. Oh my God. So okay. <sighs> All right. So now you've mentioned the curfew. You've mentioned, okay, I'm a bit, this is, I know. <laughs> this is very, okay. So already, that already, now you've gotten me into the next point, which I wanted to talk about, which was the managing of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Because now if you have the police deciding who and who cannot pass yeah. and who and who cannot get a pass, did you find it like with time, did this become easier or did you have to do other way? Like, like what now? After this happened, was there like a change in the attitude of the police? Did no, not change. That no, we did not change the attitude of the police. No, we just now managed to like now start calling the MCAs. Mm-hmm. Like for her to go to the hospital now, mm-hmm. after the first night she was not taken to the hospital, yeah. we had to involve the local mm-hmm. MCA. Yeah, that's the person we had to involve because the police, the the cab guy could not drive because there was a barrier. Yeah. So we had to talk to the MC and that, and there were no ambulances, remember, because the ambulances were only for COVID patients. Yeah, God. Yes. And if you, and, and these vulnerable people cannot afford even an ambulance, an ambulance. Even on a normal day. Yeah. Yes. Even on a normal day. Yeah. So, and also there was that fear. Mm. If you call an ambulance and there's a patient, everyone is like, there could be COVID. There's no, co- yeah. There could be, it could be a COVID patient. Mm. So there's so many hindrances towards women actually mm-hmm. yeah. getting health. Healthcare. Healthcare. And the police did not even help because we'd ask them, like, we'd be driving off, taking a patient home, mm-hmm. and we ask them, what are you actually fighting? Exactly. Are you, because they don't even have masks mm-hmm. on, <laughs> and they're busy loading people in, in their cars, tracks, and I'm like, yeah. what are we fighting? Are we fighting the people? Are we fighting the virus? The what virus, are we exactly yes. doing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I like that you've mentioned the police because I really have a problem with the police managing a pandemic. I have a problem with even the budgeting allocation that was done during the pandemic. The police got more, more allocation than the healthcare workers. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a time at the beginning of the pandemic, we were clapping for healthcare workers at 12. Did you receive the claps? Did you receive the congratulations? <laughs> I, was busy, I was busy trying to save lives. You did not even realize that we were clapping I for didn't. you? You did not realize that we were that, calling that you That, I'll be honest, maybe my fellow health workers noticed. I didn't. I didn't actually. And did it come in any form, way of, like, is, was it, like, the clapping, did it translate into anything for you personally? Obviously, okay, so you did not recognize it, but did you see it in maybe bump in salary? Oh, but, Bu- Ooh. <laughs> bumping what? <laughs> bumping what? Like healthcare workers, as you all know, mm, yeah, yeah, weren't paid during COVID. The salaries would come late during COVID times, and there was no allowance. You know, they, you you think there would be health hardship allowance, ha- hardship because, allowance or yeah, something like yeah. that. Nothing. First and foremost, when COVID hit, it was so hard to get like masks. Mm. That I'll be honest with. Yeah, like I. I almost got in trouble because there was this one group mm-hmm. that I actually put this facility in, into blast because there were mm-hmm. no there were no there were no masks, and you have to like see patients and there are no masks and these patients don't have masks, masks and, and you'd you'd think yeah. the government you'd think that the government would provide masks for us mm-hmm. and masks for for the every more Kenya Kenya come in mm-hmm. to the into hospital because yeah. you're protecting the health caregiver and the health caregiver is protecting us yes yeah. But that was not the case. And then us as health workers would have to go home to our families. And you spent the whole day without a mask. And you've exposed ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So here we are busy clapping and you people don't even have masks. We are clapping took, here at midday. You people don't, ha- your salaries have not been paid. It, t- it took a while. It took a while. It took a while. And, and that is the problem. It's, it's not that it came later. Mm-hmm. Why, these are things that 
immediately plan for exactly. if there's, an, a, there's a pan, pandemic yeah. in the whole world yeah that's the first thing you do to protect so that we can give care to exactly the people exactly. so it took a while yeah it took a while Okay, so now we now we have we have we have now gotten into now the healthcare situation yes, because yes. even before the pandemic, the healthcare situation in this country was a mess. Yes. Doctors have been on strike on and off. Me, I support the doctor strike. I am here for doctors being paid what they're worth, Supported. and I'm here for equipping the hospitals, having more research centers. And I just want to ask you, what would you what would you say about the healthcare depart the healthcare general? Because we've had this conversation with you before, mm -hmm. and you told me that you know what needs to be done. Yep. Because obviously you you work in it, and me my question is to ask how can we help you win the rest of us who, you know, are advocates and agitators and you know all, all these other people who support the doctors. How can we help you win? Well, maybe you can push on the agendas for health workers to be paid on time. Actually, mm -hmm. the county, yeah, and um, allowances, yeah, more allow yes. more allowances for because they they actually deserve it. Like, they, it's not like they actually deserve it. Yeah. I, I'm telling you the work that we do or is done yeah. is way beyond. There was one time, mm -hmm. let me break, there was one time there was a strike. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there was the media was showing mm -hmm. pig heads outside Kambu Hospital, right? I remember, yeah. But inside the hospital, we didn't even know this was happening because the nurses and the doctors were busy working and everything was so calm. Like when I went home and watched TV, I was like, this happened, happened today? Yeah. We were busy doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So, you're, yeah. Yes. And you're not even paying attention to what is happening yes. because you are concerned about what is happening inside the exactly. hospital. Exactly. So, if only you can get support, yeah. the healthcare people can get support yeah. from everyone and people to appreciate because the media has shown that we're, we're doing, we're not doing what you're supposed to do, but we really mm -hmm. are. This is, and, and like, a few public hospitals I know mm -hmm. are really good. Yeah. But the name they get outside here mm -hmm. is really bad. Yeah. Yes. And yet it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a larger problem. It's a larger political problem, but not with the actual. Yes. There's health. so much politics in the administration. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where the issues are. Okay. Yes. And now, um, with the management of the pandemic, if yes, you were right. to be like the manager of the pandemic, mm -hmm. what would you do different about how this pandemic was managed and how, yeah, just how generally the pandemic was managed from a healthcare perspective. First and foremost, provide PPEs. Like that, that should not even be a discussion. Something point. we yeah. are on Twitter saying hashtag. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So provide that. Mm -hmm. Make sure they are compensated. Mm -hmm. Hardship allowances. Mm -hmm. And make sure that there, is, there is isolation rooms or places for if a nurse or a doctor mm -hmm. got infected. And yeah, just give support. Was there like an isolation room? Late. You know, all this, when it started, none mm -hmm. of this was there. And okay. maybe it's because it was a shock for everyone. Yes, but yes. then again, it gets to a point where you, when you read on the same news or hear on the news that Constantly. these things are there. Mm -hmm. there we have donations of masks, mm -hmm. but you're not seeing them. Mm -hmm. We have donations for PPEs, we are, we are not seeing them. Yeah. So, that. All right. And then now there's the plan. There's not the vaccination plan. Mm -hmm. Now the vaccines have come. We don't know what is happening with the vaccines. Mm -hmm. We don't know, like, so what is happening with the vaccine? I don't know whether you, you have the, the answers to the vaccination questions. I, I, I don't have the answers, but I know that uh, we got vaccinated. The health workers got vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's... I don't know how things run in the healthcare. Things need to change. That's what I think. Yeah. Because... I don't know if it's the logistics yeah. or the planning. Yeah. I don't know what exactly goes, but it never goes as smooth as, as, as it, it should. It can, and, it, and it's possible and, for it to Yes, and it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. Uh, so we had um, vaccines for health workers. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that, that happened. Yeah. And then there was the police. Yes. And there's the teachers. The teachers. Old and the people, elder. And the, and the elder. Yes. 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 I know this because my grandmother also got. <laughs> yes. So I think, the I think yeah. that, that was good. Mm -hmm. But I can say... It, it could, could have, have gone better. Even yes. I mean, it could be going faster. So yes. now there's the second dose. Yes. Do you know whether there will be a second dose? Will you get a second? Like, we hope to. We hope, I believe yeah. there's going to be one. Yeah. Yes. You can only hope and believe there's going to be one. Okay. Yes. And so there's also work that you're doing outside of what you do. Yes. Yes. Um, where you're just making sure that people get access to healthcare, people get access to services that the government ideally should be providing, but because of <laughs> because of the we know how the government runs so i just want you to talk briefly about the work that you're doing with imani volunteers i know it because we're friends 
yeah so just just talk briefly about it and tell us how we can support you okay so um outside my job description i have mm-hmm. uh, have a program i've run this program f- since 2011 mm-hmm. I was very young then mm-hmm. younger <laughs> so uh, we've had this program where we help vulnerable children and the most people who people who can't afford healthcare and people who can afford food yeah food and clothing yeah it's not a the dream is to have a shelter yeah. it's not a shelter yet okay and we do not discriminate mm-hmm. we identify people from all over it's not yeah. i i work within kiambu county yeah so i'm not limited to only Kiambu people. Okay. If I get a call from Kisumu where, where I started working, mm-hmm. if I get a call from CRDC hospital and someone tells me there's a there's a kid who needs this, mm-hmm. I can mobilize people from that side mm-hmm. and get help. The yeah. people I mobilize, this is not a funded organization. It's just from well-wishers. Yeah. Like I can, I can call up Wanjiro and like, there's a woman in here who needs diapers. There's yeah. a woman in Malau who needs all these things. Mm-hmm. So we can, so that's how we we manage to help these people. Yeah. Yes. And mostly, the people I work with mostly are people living with HIV because this is what I've majored in ever since I yeah. left school. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm very, it's a very personal thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And because I believe that in Kenya, there's, in Kenya, there's, there's a person who's living with HIV mm-hmm. or they've, we've lost someone to, with HIV. to HIV. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's very personal because I lost my small sister. Oh, okay. And uh, I, then I didn't know the much I know right now. Yeah. And now that I know all this, I'm trying mm-hmm. to save more lives. I'm trying to tell people because because most people out here don't know that the government hospitals offer more services. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there needs to be more sensitization to the community people mm-hmm. to know what what services you can get mm-hmm. and the free services you can get mm-hmm. and there is free services like the HIV. Everything HIV okay. is supported. Okay. Everything HIV is supported. Mm-hmm. And my organization has um, psychosocial support groups. Yeah. So we have for like young mothers, mm-hmm. we have for teenagers, yes. we have for young adults, mm-hmm. and we have for the discordant couples. Okay. So discordant couples, these are the one like partner. One is negative and one is positive. Yes. Okay. So we have programs where, and mostly this, this, these programs are for women. Because mm. women, women are the ones who come to the hospital. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I don't know why men don't. <laughs> yeah. So the women are the ones who are carrying all the burdens. Yeah. Because if you're in a discordant relationship mm. and your husband has to take prep medication, yeah, he doesn't come. You're the one who's come, who's coming to the hospital mm-hmm. to get the medication. Yeah. And this is where we do risk assessment. We find out if there's IPV, we find mm-hmm. out if there's GPV. IPV, wait, wait. IPV is GP, Please, we are. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> IPV, IPV is. Is emotion. It, 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 so there's gender based violence, yes. and then there's intimate partner violence. Okay. So this is the your partner. Mm-hmm. So if you like, we have a person who stand. Let's say, God forbid, mm-hmm. you have you HIV positive, and yeah. your husband knows you about HIV, HIV positive. positive yes. Your HIV status, mm-hmm. and then maybe it's a discordant couple. Him, mm-hmm. he doesn't have any, and you have. Mm-hmm. So there's that psychological abuse. There's mm-hmm. emotional abuse. Yeah. There's sometimes he does he he abuses you thinks you're the one who brought it to the family, mm. so there's that intimate partner violence. violence. Yes. yes, and it's interesting you've brought it up. Although this was not something that I mean I, I love that the conversation has gotten here, mm. because there was a lot of violence during the pandemic. Oh yeah, there was a lot of intimate vi- intimate partner violence during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. So now with the hospitals being shut down almost like 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 a partial um, a partial shutdown where mm. were women going because salons yes. have been let's just talk Oof. about women and Oof. and please I just I just <laughs> felt it so this is actually hospitals yeah I should have said this earlier on at the beginning hospitals yeah. are like free getaway places okay. for women yeah cuz you can get a, a client walk in mm mm-hmm. I'm not a psychologist. Yes. Walks in and start pouring everything out. Yeah. And you just, you have to just sit there and listen. Mm. So when the hospital was closed, mm-hmm. so there was so much depression going on. Yes. And the women didn't have an outlet. Yes. Or somewhere to run to. Yeah. Or, and feel empowered or, and feel like they belong or they're, they're people. Mm. So that hospital being shut, that brought a lot of... Is it really the, like the hospital being shut or is it like the people were... Yes, because of the curfew yes. and also because of the COVID. So you and had... And the strike. And the strike. So yes. now you have less people coming into hospital because of this big thing. And it was, and the COVID is serious. Mm-hmm. But then there are also 
And also, if, you, if you're not paying the healthcare workers, they're not going to be there. They're going to have limited people because the CCC clinic, mm-hmm. clinic the ART department, mm-hmm. was always open. Okay. But it would be limited. Mm-hmm. Limited people, like Would dispensing in, medicine. Yeah, yeah. And most people are not, like when you have a normal, when the hospital is open and it's normal, mm-hmm. there's so many blocks these people go, go through. There's so many sections they go through. Mm-hmm. So they'll come to the adherence counselor, they'll talk before they go get their medicine. Yeah. They'll come to the counselor, they'll mm-hmm. have a conversation with this person. Mm-hmm. So they'd have gone through so many people and would have opened At up. At least opened up, yeah. But during COVID, because of time as well, yeah. you just come in through, get your medicine, and go you're returned it, go home. So there's no outside. So you can't even one. talk about if you've been eating properly. And so if you, you want to talk, the, yeah. and if you want to talk, I'm sorry. I mean, if you want to talk, mm-hmm. the person give the healthcare mm-hmm. is overwhelmed. You get? Yeah. They're overwhelmed yeah. and they also don't get supervision. So they also don't get a place to go. And talk, this, yeah. Yes, because these things, when these patients come, it's a lot. Yeah. And you can, you can actually identify. You can have a woman coming in. Mm-hmm. They've been beaten the whole night. And you're beaten the whole night. But you have to show up at work. And this woman is talking about things that you went through last night. Do you get what I'm trying I'm to say? I'm understanding what you're saying. So there's yeah. another woman over here. And there's a patient who's come. Because this is my work. I have to yes. come to work. I was been a lesson. I have to come to work, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's a woman who comes here with the same kind of... So you're seeing yourselves in each yes. other. It's like I see you. You yes. see me. Yeah. And then let's say you're the only person present that day for the, to the, at the clinic. Yes. So you, can, you cannot even excuse and say, can I call Nani to come and because conduct this session? Even, yeah. You see? So that there was all yeah there was all kinds of things. So what we used to do we the, we had local my organization worked with the local people mm-hmm. where where I live. Mm-hmm. So we'd have feed feeding program. I've had people come through. We fed yes. we fed like two thousand families. This is during the pan, during the, the pandemic. Yes. yes, and most people who who we were the most people in our program are the people again I repeat living with HIV. Yes. So we had a lot of support from friends and mm-hmm. well wishers. Yeah. Who helped as feed as many people. And then I used to work with the local people who get passes yeah. for us to like distribute food mm-hmm. beyond mm-hmm. even past hours or Do go rescue people. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. And and how is that program going? Is this still going on? Do you still need support? Do you? Yes, we still, need support. still need support. Yes, we yeah. still need support. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's an on, ongoing program. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always receiving donations for clothes. There's need, we need clothes all the time. Baby clothes. Because mm-hmm. we have wards in like, in like hospi- some hospital, we have wards, pe- pediatric wards with kids who have been abandoned. Oh my God. We have a lot of those. Yeah. So they need clothes. Yeah. So the hospital can only do what it can. Mm-hmm. And then we work with the social workers Mm -hmm. in in certain facilities. So every facility has a social worker. So we link with those social workers and Mm -hmm. those are the ones who highlight all these cases. We've had kids, we've had kids, a girl who was raped during pandemic, a 10 year old by eight men. Mm. A 10 year old, yes. So these things were happening and it is because she didn't have food and her mom passed. And these men were just doing it to get a mandazi, to give a mandazi, to give her food. Ten men are raping a ten-year-old. A ten-year-old had had sex with eight men after we did our follow-up. For a, and the excuse is a mandazi. Yes, they've ident- they've they've seen this family. The mom is not there. And she needs food. Mm-hmm. They've seen this. Mm-hmm. So, okay, this is a lot. Like you're giving me I a, know, lot it's a lot. Of, a lot. Okay, is I it want allowed to, even. No, it's allowed okay. because these are conversations we need to have. Yeah. Because you know we see them in the news, and there are people who are actually living these lives. What yeah. we are seeing in the news is someone's reality. Yes. Now I want us to go back. You said that the government does free services. What, yes. What what services are these? Because you know, when you think about HIV, and I don't, I, the last time I thought about HIV and AIDS was when I lost my mom, mm-hmm. and I've been terrified, terrified, terrified. So now, when we are talking about the free services that the government, that which 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 services are these apart from the testing and the medicine? So what the government does mm-hmm. works with donor funding, right? Okay. So we have like supplements mm-hmm. for like the most malnourished malnourished mm-hmm. children. So okay. we have like sup, sup, supplements that they give. Mm-hmm. Um, there is support system that okay. they give, and then there's some. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. The programs, mm-hmm. so they get to buy them food. Okay. Not all of them, but identify the most vulnerable. They're all vulnerable, but yeah, they're most the vulnerable. most vulnerable. And this yes. is free. Like this is now you walk into the clinic and you establish whether or not you need food, you need this, and you need, and then you put them on that program. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. All right. And that is mm-hmm. how that is that is how our organization work with the CCC clinic. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, so what else? There's, so there's the food. There's the supplements. There's T 
TB, TB medication is free. Mm-hmm. Follow up, we do follow up. Mm-hmm. They follow up a patient even at home and do follow up on phone. Like if you miss your appointment, they'll call you. Wow, okay. Like the HIV people and the people living, the people living in HIV and TB people, mm-hmm. they're t- the way I see it, mm-hmm. they're like children. Yeah. Like we do a thorough follow up. Like mm-hmm. I'm not like, it's like we're begging this, but to like come take your medication. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. So the program, the, the program set for HIV works. I it works. It. Yeah. It works. It's only that now during COVID, mm-hmm. with the curfews. Yes. It went. And with the lockdown, in the lockdown, yes. lockdowns. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it works. So that, 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 that sector of HIV mm-hmm. works. But it works mostly because of donor funding and mm-hmm. support mm-hmm. from organizations like the ones I have. Okay. Yes. And also there was a time we saw that <laughs> we saw um, a lot is being flagged off and mm-hmm. there was no ARV medicine. Was that a thing of news or was it like qua ground? Because when you go qua ground, mm-hmm. are they, do we really have ARVs and the, and the medicines that babies are usually given? I don't know. I don't know the name of those medicines. Yeah, they're prophylaxis. Like if a mom, if a HIV mother gives birth to a newborn, mm. so the baby is put on prophylaxis medication yeah. that is within 72 hours. Yeah. And then continues. And then you continue. Yes. So are those medicines there now or is there still a problem with, with those medicines? This is very... Like the media was saying there was no medication in some facilities. Some mm-hmm. facilities there were med- medication. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's true and it's not true? It's some part, some facilities have <laughs> had medication when other facilities didn't have. Did not have medication. Like in Kisumu mm-hmm. and Homa Ben, the Western. And CSI, yeah. And yes. C- CSI, yeah. Yes. yes. I've had people I know who are patients mm-hmm. who call me and tell me they don't have they don't drugs have. If, I can act, if I can source from where you are. Yes. And that that and that's doable actually. Yeah. Because if you if you go to a facility and they don't have medication then with, it's the, with easy a card, to, yeah, you can get this ARV medication anywhere as long as you have a card. Mm-hmm. You present a card a card that has a number that a PC number that everyone has. Mm-hmm. You can get medication. Yeah. Yes. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much for coming. I mean, I I didn't anticipate that we were going to talk about HIV and AIDS, but I'm glad that we did. I'm glad that we had this conversation about Mm -hmm. HIV in a pandemic and talked about women and talked about children and the elderly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I wish you all the best with the money. So now where can we find you so that we can support you and the work that you're doing? So Imani Imani volunteers, the website is coming up very soon. Uh, we're on Facebook as Imani Volunteers. Um, you can find me and follow me on Facebook, Masiwaweru. And um, the phone number, you, you can call to, to refer Facebook a patient in. or to donate is 0720 654 mm. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Masi. Thank, thank you, you for I, having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. I feel like Sometimes, like with the pandemic, we got into this, what is it called? This like kitanel. So all it's, everything is about COVID, 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 COVID. Everything, everything, was, everything was COVID, everything else was forgotten. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much for being here. I am glad that you are part of the healthcare. Like you, you're, you're putting the care in healthcare. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and listening to mine. It's a comment we had, Mercy who works at the ART department. She works with HIV and AIDS, uh, you know, patients. And so it was very interesting to have her because in my mind, when I was thinking about this episode, I really wanted to talk about pandemic and pregnancy and women. And then I love that she really just came in with, listen, okay, that is important, but there is also this other thing that we need, that needs our attention. So thank you very much for listening. And you can find this episode on my YouTube channel, which is Mofrika Monzangu. And then you can find it on Anchor, on Mine is a Comment. The name of the podcast is Mine is a Comment on Anchor, on Spotify, Google, anywhere where they they host, uh, you know, podcasts, you will find me there. On Twitter, you will find me at I am underscore one zero. Please just let me know you watched, you listened, so that we can, you know, continue to have this conversation. On Instagram, it's one zero nguhe, and on Facebook is also one zero nguhe. Thank you very much for the love, for the followers. I appreciate it. and. Yeah, please take care and go and get tested for HIV and AIDS. It's open. It's free. Please go get tested. It's important. Yes. And there's a lot of support. We've heard from us. There's a lot of support and a lot of things are free. So get tested. And thank you.